Welcome back to another Trade Odds Technical Analysis. It has been a while since I have done a public video. I'll tell you that. Glad to be here, though. Um, I've been very, very busy in the VIP room. I think I did 15 live streams last month. I've done two already this month. A lot of coaching and learning happening in between that. Um, but again, I wanted to pop on here, do a public video, do some altcoins. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Typically, um, I usually do Bitcoin and Ethereum to start off with, but I'm just going to run through some altcoins that some of the VIP members actually had questions about. Um, but so I thought I would share my thoughts on them publicly. So anyway, that being said, let's get to the video. All right, so here we have Adam USD on the daily time frame. I'm going to try to get through these charts relatively quickly because there are going to be a few of them. Um, but for you guys in VIP, you know that Adam, we have done incredibly well trading this and some of the recent trades. And I've said publicly when I've been taking these trades, uh, but I shorted Adam at 43.75 and that was ended up being a really, really good short. Obviously, we wrote it all the way we're down to this weekly retest here where my long bid filled actually on stream. It was at the near the end of one of our live streams and uh, my bid actually filled here. Uh, right right at this weekly level i think it was within a couple cents of the actual low so that was a, ended up being an incredibly awesome long position which i then sold at the daily level so again the retest of this or not a retest but essentially the where this daily level formed here at 4250 um, so again really really nice trading on adam and kind of why i love trading alts is for the fact of like you can get really really good volatility um, when the rest of the market might kind of be, you know, again, not as active. So there's just been so, there's been incredible trades to be had on alts. Um, if you know where to look. So Adam's definitely a good one. So where are we at now? So, I mean, just looking at this, we're basically kind of in the middle of this range that's starting to form. And typically, you know, I'd rather wait for kind of a retest lower or again, maybe another retest of this upper part of the range here, your daily, your weekly level, something like that. Uh, typically, I like, wouldn't really want to look for a trade around here. Let's see what Ichimoku says. Well, we are at our Tenkin, um, which is pretty decent. What I don't like about this, though, is, again, you kind of have a big deviation from your Tenkin to your Kijun. So, again, your Tenkin is this blue line here. Your Kijun is this yellow line here, which has been really nice support. So again, we got a couple tests here. Really, obviously, very, very nice, strong reaction off of there. And looking, again, as far as where we sit right now, this is an area where I would probably be a bit more patient and either kind of, again, look for either another test of the upper part of this range or maybe if we do come back down here, which, you know, you kind of do have a C-clamp forming here. Again, when you get a big deviation from your... Well, basically, when your tanking is really far away from your Kijun, um i think that again I'd, I'd probably be a little bit more patient here but i do like kind of where the kijun is lining up so it's sitting again right back on this weekly level which was incredibly strong support the last time that we came down and tested it um so i i you know if i was looking for a trade again is there one right here you know maybe you could be scalping out them on lower time frames so maybe go down on a five minute 50 minute something like that and maybe you could find um you know some decent scalping opportunities, which I would probably say are, are are there considering like how volatile this chart has been. So it's probably been a really, really good scalping coin, to be fair. But if you're looking at this from more of a swing trader's perspective, I think it's better to be patient, in my opinion. I would either wait for, again, kind of another retest of the highs, which, you know, as long as you're kind of holding this current level, that's kind of what I would lean to next. Because again, this is, this is a relatively strong chart. Um, or... If we do start to break supports, which obviously your Tenkin is kind of your first one you'd want to keep your eye on, right? Which we've bounced off of so far. Kind of have another support coming in here about 33.50, something like that. Basically where this monthly pivot is, um, is kind of an, an important level to watch. If you lose that, I do think you have a pretty good chance of coming at least down to this daily. Uh, but again, a, a, a retest of the weekly level again. And considering Daily Kijun is lining up right there right now, I think that would be like that would be my opportune area to look for a long position. So that's just again, that's just kind of what I what I would be looking for there. If you do, you know, again, 
I'm kind of like jumping ahead. But if you were to come down here and lose this as support, I do think you would actually rotate all the way down um, basically to where this golden pocket monthly area is. And that could be, you know, again, from here, even just from your weekly level is 20%. You're looking at 20 to 26%. I think very high probability if this support area is lost, you're very likely going to come all the way down here and retest that, which I think that on its own could be a very, very nice opportunity. I don't think it's very likely, obviously, considering what price is at right now. But again, that's essentially how I will look, you know, why I like to keep these levels on my chart so that I have a game plan again in case, you know, in case this area doesn't hold up as support. If it's tested, that's I already know essentially where I'm going to be looking for um, as far as that goes. So another thing I kind of like to look at. Um, so your anchored VWAP, which is basically from the bottom of this rise right so i mean you could maybe put it down here if you want but this is essentially where price kind of bottomed out and then you got your impulsive move to the upside um that again that is lining which if you look might be a little hard to see but this was relatively well respected when it was tested again it, this came basically you know it was in confluence with your key june here got really nice bounce off of it strong move to the upside it's kind of the same thing happening right here, right? Your anchor VWAP is just below where your keychain is. So again, if price was to come back down here, I do think that this could be another nice long opportunity. I certainly would be paying attention to that. Um, but as it stands, and considering again, you know, Bitcoin had a nice break to the upside. I think if there's continued strength in the market, I would probably look for this to continue to the upside though. I, I do have an upside bias um basically again as long as you're holding and you, and you, you know i would take this level to level but as long as you're holding at least this daily tank in here really about 36 bucks let's just say as long as you're holding that as support i do think there's a pretty good probability of us actually coming back up to test this level but it's important to know where your supports are on the downside that you're ready and uh to take action again adam beautiful like really really good trading so this is kind of something you know i kind of have this thing where you know, sometimes I'll take, you know, if I get like just three straight killer trades, nailing it, I kind of like, it's kind of counterintuitive to some people, but I actually like to take a break. And, you know, I traded that so well, made a ton of money trading it. And it's kind of what, you know, I just like to take a break, kind of reset my thoughts on it. And then, you know, be patient for the next setup. I get very, very patient. So that's one thing, again, that I really would recommend for traders is you don't have to be trading every single day you don't have to take you know take 10 20 tr trades a day obviously if they're really good setups you take them but when you're looking again when you're looking for very high probability type trades there's nothing wrong with being patient so that's adam okay it looks pretty good let's move on so we're on dogecoin now and let's see so this is one um i'm gonna actually close this up all right, so Dogecoin came right down to your 786. So that's why I have this fit pulled. It's basically from, I mean, look at this insane move, right? It just, just insane. It is, the crazy part is this isn't even the bottom. It's even close to the bottom. Like you can't really see it, um, but this is literally just that really, really big impulsive move that essentially led, or, or you know, it was the start of Doge really having that insane parabolic massive run uh, that we had earlier this year that was that was just incredible to watch that uh, but again from the base essentially where this impulsive it's like it's so crazy you can barely see it but essentially where this crazy impulsive move started which i mean even if you just measure that that's a thousand it's almost 1100 percent and it looks like nothing on this chart right which that, that is that is how insane this was and why i'm using this as kind of the starting point for my fib but what i like about it it's obviously where this wick came down, right, was not the 786 at this time. It was not. So the fib, the, you're actually pulling from your low to your high. But the nice thing is it came right back down, and your 786 has been your critical support, which is essentially in conjunction with this low, right? So that's what it's really nice to see that confluence lining up there. But we know that the 786 of this pull, which is basically 16, you know, 16 and a half cents or so is a massively important support level so that's why the fib is lined up the way that it is 
And then again, your 886, which is nice, is basically, you know, the top of your initial um, impulse to move up, big re rejection off of that. And then it continued to govern price action until ultimately it broke up. So this, again, if price loses the 786 fib, I do think that the 886, if it came down this deep, would be very well respected. So this would be an area of interest for myself. Um, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon, but let's say Bitcoin, you know, and let's say the market for some reason has, you know, reverses quite hard. We end up seeing, you know, significantly lower levels. Definitely think Dogecoin would probably be taking a beating if that did happen. Um, so I have some actual, this one I have kind of all nice and neat. So I'm trying to think what's the first thing that I want to kind of go over. So there, I do have some key levels here that I marked off. So we'll start there. And the key levels, you'll get to know them on my chart. Um, they just represent areas of importance, right? That I think are, they might not necessarily be, you know, again, like a, a time-based SR level or support resistance level, something like a daily level or monthly level, something like that. Um, but they're just key, they're important support resistance levels, right? So this one at 26 cents, which is currently above us, Um, essentially is, you know, again, it's just a very like clean support resistance flip, right? So what do I mean by that? So essentially price broke up, tested the, you know, this trend line, which the trend line isn't relevant to this key level, but again, came down, found support here. So that's how, you know, support, nice, really strong move up, big, big move down. Um, and then look where we were ejecting off of now, right? So what was once support? is lost, flipped into resistance. So if price does make its way back up to this key level, about 20, a little over 26 cents, I do expect this to be pretty important resistance. Obviously, if this level is flipped, that would be very bullish. And then you would likely be looking for continuation to the upside. So if, for instance, we saw some upside on Dogecoin and it happened around, you know, a few weeks from now, right? So you see basically this downtrend, um, this trend line that we have right here, that's currently very, very strong resistance. I think if you were able to test this, again, kind of at where these lines intersect, that to me adds even stronger confluence at this key level is gonna be very relevant here because I would expect that to be very strong resistance if tested. So that's the first key level that I'm looking at. Again, 26, a little over 26 cents. To the downside, you might recognize this, this is the 786 that we talked about previously, or this low, same thing, right? So again, support, massive, massive, huge move up, came right back down exactly to this level, another nice bounce, support, came back down again, support, really big bounce. If we come down to this level again, obviously the more times that a level is tested, theory, the weaker it becomes, but it's support until it's not. So you would, I do think that again, you'd have another nice opportunity um, or, you know, a pretty good risk reward long, in my opinion, if we came back down to that 16 cent level. Zooming in, try to get a good shot of this. I mean, if you take away this key level, you just hide it. What do you kind of have forming here, right? A descending triangle which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern, meaning that, you know, again, if you, things are things form a, a descending triangle, you kind of have, I would say, a downside bias to, you know, to typically these break to the downside. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's going to. Um, I do think that it is valid, but for myself, again, this would be a very, very big critical support level if tested, and I do think it could be a really nice opportunity, especially... If you saw something where we actually came and took these lows. So if you saw price basically come down, knife through the level, take out all of the wicks here, and then reclaim this key level, I think that could be an incredible long opportunity for Doge. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, that's why that key level is there. Um, let's see, there we go. And then finally, the last key level here at eight cents little under nine cents is the 886. The same thing that we talked about here. And I love how the fib, you know, the fib lines up perfectly, but it's essentially these critical highs, right? So if you zoom back out, 
This is insane how this happened. Um, this is a this is an incredible move. But anyway, big rejection off of here. Price comes back up to this basically the same level. Another very nice rejection off of these um, or off of these highs here. Nice consolidation, and then you get your crazy impulsive move, and you don't really come back down to retest this level, right? So again, we know that this was really really big resistance that was broken. I do think that if price came down again, that's pretty far away from where we currently are. But again, having your game plan ready and ready to trade levels as they're approached. Um, I do think that if we came down again, this would have to be sub 10 cents here about, you know, eight was this eight, three quarter cent, something like that. I think that could be a very, very nice long opportunity. So, you know, and it's kind of the same thing in reverse. I think if you break, you know, if you break this key level, and you don't do a swing failure pattern, essentially taking the lows here and reclaiming the key level. If you just lose this, and basically price starts hanging out below here, and you're getting, you're getting, you're not getting any strong reactions. I do think that you, I mean, you could, I guess you could look to short that. Um, but I do think that there'd be a pretty good probability of us eventually visiting this level again, if that were to happen. Um, but essentially. Doge is in this, it's in a similar, a similar position and it's, you know, had a very weak reaction, I would say. Um, you know, again, Bitcoin has looked pretty good. Really nice move up for that. Ethereum again, nice move up. And, you know, Dogecoin just hasn't really responded. It's definitely been one of the weaker altcoins. Um, so, you know, is it a great long opportunity here? I mean, even locally, all right? So even locally, you can kind of see this is another, I would say a key level on a lower time frame right here but essentially you have if you look at where these opens and closes are um, you look at your wicks big rejection now we're coming back up to test this level again and you can't get above it right so basically this you're getting very very strong rejections off of here so far um i mean i want to say like super strong rejections but you're definitely getting rejections off of here i think if you're able to reclaim this though so if you're able to push up and actually close above then I think you can look for continuation, probably back up to this uh, this monthly pivot. So I think if you reclaim this key level, you probably have a pretty good shot at getting to this pivot here around 24 cents, something like that. Probably a bit of a pullback there, but ultimately that would set things up to come back and test some of these upper levels, I think. So that's kind of what I would be looking for. And then to the downside, um, you know, again, probably, you know, around, around 20 cents. 19 19 and a half to 20 cents something like that i think is really important resistant or a really important support at this time if that's lost then you're kind of looking again back for this really what i think is a pretty decent long opportunity um at least an area you know i wouldn't be setting bids here uh, i would definitely want to kind of be watching price in real time see what it looks like uh, but i think this could be another nice opportunity especially if you take these lows i think that would be that would be a pretty decent opportunity that's dogecoin so this one I'm not really familiar with. It was a question, again, this was this is from the VIPs. Question that was asked in Discord. I'm not familiar with Nier, um, but happy to take a look at the chart. As it stands, I mean, this is pretty decent. Very strong, like very strong reaction. Um, and this looks like quite a few, you know, these look like similar. They, like if you look at some of, some of the other alts, you'll see a very similar looking pattern, all right? Um, as it sits, Basically, you know, you're kind of near this weekly, which I think could be a good opportunity. Um, that's definitely kind of like my, this is the closest support level that we have at the moment. You do have your anchored VWAP that had a very nice reaction the last time that it was tested. I mean, technically the last two times that it was tested. So from here, you had a 48, almost 49% bounce, the first test of the anchored VWAP. So it's very, very, very strong. Definitely something I'd be paying attention to, attention to, and then the second time, uh, which I kind of have, which I have this level marked as a key level at the moment, um, but a 33% bounce off of this, you know, off of this support area is a really, really good, probably, you know, again, probably a good area to pay attention to. Um, if, you know, for, if the weekly level is lost here, I think again, kind of looking back at this anchored VWAP key level, even as deep, maybe as deep as a quarterly level. Uh, the quarter of the SR level here. I think that's, you know, could be a decent opportunity. Uh, but as it sits, you are. Did you make a lower low here? No. So this key level held up relatively nicely. I do think if that's lost, though. 
I would maybe be a little less inclined actually to want to take a long here. Unless again, maybe you just take the lows, reclaim the key level, something like that. Then yeah, he could look for another bounce. Let's see anything on Ichiboku? No, not really. Not too helpful to be to be honest. Yeah, you're kind of like through your key June here. Tenkin is acting as resistance at the moment. I don't think there's really, you know, in a couple days. What is this? Five days from now. So you're gonna start running into the cloud. Maybe you can, um, you know. This, this structure, maybe it helps support price a little bit. But as far as Ichimoku goes, I don't think there's really a whole lot there that I would be paying attention to. I would be more, you know, I would definitely be looking more at the horizontal support resistance levels. I think that's they're a little easier to trade. Um, but so you have your supports to the downside. Uh, again, this weekly level looks pretty decent. If that's lost, anchored VWAP key level. I think this is kind of like the area where I would be looking at least for, you know, I think a potential scalp could even be nice out of here. But if this is lost, I do think that, you know, I guess you would probably, I would be looking more towards this golden pocket here, which is from this low to the high. So you see, that's essentially where this golden pocket lines up. Also lines up with your macro value area high. So I like the confluence there. Um, you know, that's kind of the next area where, again, if this key level is broken, I do think that you would end up probably revisiting these levels um, down here, but that could be a nice opportunity. To the upside, you're looking at about eight bucks. Eight bucks is kind of, again, this is kind of like low, I'm talking like a very low time frame. local resistance level would be $8. You start pushing back above that, showing some strength. Uh, really the next target for me would probably be about nine, nine bucks. 920 something like within that region i think you're going to find a bit of resistance there and then ultimately again your golden pocket weekly level i think this is probably going to be pretty strong resistance um uh, which and just so you know how to pull that golden pocket it's literally from your high i'm not sure if, if this is all-time high or not but it's your high to your low there's your golden pocket so your 61866 lines up very nicely weekly confluence sitting right there um i do like that quite a bit as far as resistance goes, if you do reclaim this though, so let's say price ends up pushing through these resistances that I just said, and if you're able to get above, you know, you're able to reclaim this weekly level, basically ten dollars. It for me really, it would have to be I'd say like ten fifty. So I think if if this is able, you know, if near is able to push up, reclaim about ten dollars and fifty cents, something like that, I do think this probably continues all time high. Is this all time high? Looks like it. Um, then you'd probably be looking significantly higher so that's near so we went to dogecoin near adam so let's look at avax really fast yeah so let's see avax basically our uh, first thing i, I want to look at again oh look at that yeah so ichimoku right not looking at these horizontal levels that she's here but just from an ichimoku standpoint your 10k is pretty important uh pretty important support that you want to see held you know, the fact is we're kind of playing right around this weekly where we're a little bit below it at the moment. I think if you do lose your Tenkin and really, I mean, you, you have a few levels of support below that uh, from a horizontal perspective. You know, really, I'd say about $61, you know, $61.64. That region is pretty important. You have your monthly pivot here. So you have a few levels of interest, your day level, obviously. Um, but what I don't like, uh, which is similar to, I believe this is Adam we were looking at, but what I what I don't like is again the distance of the T, the the Tenkin and the Kijun, very far apart. And typically, when you see these happen, or when you when you have this kind of a essentially a deviation away from each other, you really do look for these mean reversions here, right? So again, price pretty far away. Tenkin was, was really climbing up aggressively um, away from your Kijun, which was flat. And you got a pretty solid mean reversion actually right to the monthly level here. Caught that low perfectly um, before another huge move up, right? So it's kind of the same thing here. It's not, I mean, obviously, if you're in a, if you're in a long position and that happens, you're probably not going to be very happy. Hopefully you have a stop. But I do think, again, kind of looking at this, again, from an Ichimoku perspective, obviously, like, this is a relatively, like, AVAX is a strong chart. It's been... It's been very, very strong, right? Um, it's kind of, you know, it's one of the ones that's been talked about for, you know, I'm going to say, what, the last month or so. It's kind of been one of the hot charts to look at. But 
this is this is something that kind of catches my eye a bit and i but i do think that if there is another kijun retest i mean i'd be i'd probably be a buyer there like that would signal you know pretty good long opportunity in my opinion which the daily kijun is coming kind of right back around your macro very high uh sorry macro value very high i mean it's like say that clearly for you um but i think again that could be a pretty decent opportunity just in itself but that is something to be aware of again you're you're Tengen is getting awfully far away from Ikijun, just something to something to kind of keep in mind. As far as your support resistance level go, again, you're kind of chopping around through this weekly, which I believe this is a new weekly level that was formed, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, but essentially, again, you can kind of see where the where your support is, right? You have this wick, and then you have these two candles here lining up pretty nicely. So around 6150, I think, is a pretty important local support that you want to see held if it is tested. Um, you do have a couple levels below, again, your monthly pivot. And I think this day level is a little bit more important, to be fair. Um, but you do have a few levels below you that I think are really important support. If you lose this daily level, I think it starts to get a little uglier, though. Like, I think then, you know, I think I'd probably look for a bit deeper retracement. Um, you know, again, you lose this day level. If you're taking this level by level, your next level, I think that would be pretty important is around this 5175 level. If that's lost, then, you know, again, you're taking it level by level, but it could start to get pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, Trying to remember what this key level is uh, that I had on my chart. I've had, my, I've had this on my chart for a little while, but just looking at it, 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 it's, it looks like a pretty clean support resistance level. Um, resistance, 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 right? Look at where your closures are. Yes, you have some wicks through it, but you know massive resistance here huge huge move to the downside before finally again kind of reclaiming it support you did get a breach of that here um you did get a breach of that here but this is again this is where your daily kijun was monthly level really really nice move up but look where your s1 monthly pivot lines up right at the key level so for me that that level would stay definitely something i would be aware of um but as this sits Kind of what I see happening here is, again, we're just forming another range, right? So it's basically a range in between these two daily levels, I would say. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see AVAX kind of play out a bit of a range here. Um, maybe for another, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to really gauge like how long something's going to be range bound for. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if that was kind of the case. And obviously, your first indication for... I would say a move lower would be losing this daily and obviously if you reclaim this day level up here at 76.44 i think very likely you're going to continue on to new all-time highs which to be fair look at the trend incredibly strong you know until you lose these supports i have to kind of be favored i have to favor the upside in this case just because again very very strong chart but that's what i would want to see again basically reclaiming this day level up here you're probably looking at 80 what is it? You know, wherever this R1 monthly pivot is, 86 bucks. Let's be real. Like a AVAX, I think, you know, obviously as long as it can continues this trajectory, it's probably going to hit hundred bucks. I mean, I think that's kind of where this is headed. Um, but you know, again, you want to see the continued strength. Obviously you want to make sure that it's respecting your support levels, even as, you know, again, if this continues higher, you're just going to be mapping out your support resistance. And that's kind of, you know, that's essentially how we we'll look to trade that. But is there a trade right here right now? You know, again, maybe you could be scalping this on low time frames. For me, again, I kind of want to see a bit of a pullback. Again, maybe the 6150 area. Um, somewhere kind of within this region, I think maybe could give you a decent opportunity. Would I look to trade this breakout? I'm not really a big fan of trading breakouts. Um, but I think if you had something like, you know, essentially if 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 it reclaimed this day level and then you get a back test. And it holds type of trade then maybe you could you know i think that, like that could be a decent uh that could be a decent trade but i much prefer obviously i would love you know i would love a bit of a pullback type of entry i much you know just prefer those just because i mean again trading breakouts it's kind of it, it's uh it's a little bit let's say it's more dangerous to do that finally tezos xtz usd so this is one that's had an incredible run. Um, you know, it's had an incredible run. Let's just say that. But we are kind of coming up into, 
you know, I don't know that we're coming up into resistance, but we are obviously, you know, getting a little bit of a pullback here. Not too surprising. The thing that I like about Tezos and just kind of looking at how this is traded is look at this. Look at, look at these moves, like really crazy volatility, right? So are you long right here? Meaning like if I wasn't in a trade, would I be looking to long XTC right here? Probably not. I don't think it's very smart. Um, just because, again, you already had this really big impulsive move. You are getting a bit of a pullback here. Again, on lower time frames, let's say you're, you know, you get down to a five minute, 50 minutes, something like that, and you find a good setup by all means, right? But looking at it from, from this perspective, I just don't think, you know, I'm I'm very, like, I think if I take a long hair, you're definitely, it's like FOMO, right? Like you're, it's, I just don't think it's very smart to do so. Um, so, but again, looking at kind of this volatility that we've been having, if you do get a meaningful pullback, I think, again, you can look to take, um, you could possibly look for an entry there. You clear this high, which is pretty crazy. You're currently below it, though. Not that it's that big of a deal, um, but pretty crazy. I mean, this is one that's kind of not surprised me, but it's just, you know, XCZ has been kind of garbage for so long. You know, <laughs> this is kind of, this is like one of those like 2018 coins that just hasn't really done anything, you know. But again, if you're at XCZ, I'm very happy for you. And uh, I hope you're killing it. Uh, but again, historically, and why I have this fib pool is very simple reason. It is literally your all-time high. I know some people think that it's it's at all-time high. It's not. Um, back in 2017 here, you have to be looking at the Coinbase chart. I think some people are looking at the Binance chart, which I, I think didn't start until like 2019, if I remember. Um, but anyway, so that's why I use Coinbase. Longer price action history. You're going to have more information to trade off of, which I think is important. One thing that I like to pull right away is this. So this is your like macro, super important golden pocket uh, because of, again, it's literally your all-time high and your all-time low, right? When it encompasses that type of price action, you know your golden pocket is, is of utmost importance. And guess what? You literally form your high in 2017. You form your low here in 2018. And... What is it like two and a half, almost three years later, something like that? You're revisiting your golden pocket. So this is what I would call like your macro golden pocket. And what happened? Well, price came all the way up. Almost perfectly hit your 618, which it went through just a little bit. Either way, hit your golden pocket. Big retracement. So from your high here into your golden pocket. 47% retracement off of that. It's not an accident. Like, Golden Pocket, incredibly important. Like, I I love Fibonacci. Let's just say that. Um, I mean, we're, we're in VIP. We talk about that all the time, right? Like, that's definitely one of the important tools in our tool belt. Um, and I think you have to have, and, you know, it's kind of one of those things like I prefer things to line up with it to give it confluence, like give it added strength um, to for it to be trading at that level. But let's be real, like the golden pocket, I think, is very, very, very important. Um, I, you know, it's just one of those things that I really like to trade off of. But again, macro golden pocket perfectly hit 40 plus percent pullback from that before ultimately taking the high. And then again, big, what is this? This is back in May. You remember what happened back in May. So mid-May, we had that big, big move to the downside on Bitcoin, right? So kind of essentially what happened here before, again, Tezos, really, really strong. Like really, really strong. Very impressive. So anyway, going to local price action, what do we see? So I have a key level here. That's very low time frame, which I'll get into. Um, kind of like looking at how this price action played out. I think, you know, again, possibly like the highest time frame support level that we have on this chart at the moment is this weekly level which i think is pretty you know i think it's a relatively good level uh, let me just see if anything lines up it really does line up 0.5 fib not super good though um you could take it here golden pockets basically it's pretty close to your monthly pivot it's pretty deep though and then from this low yeah golden pocket lines up with your monthly 382 lines up with your weekly level 
Okay. That's pretty that's that's pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, I mean really this weekly level is kind of like the, the bigger support um that I would be paying attention to. And I really wouldn't want to see the weekly level lost. Um, but there's this kind of key level here. I don't remember where I pulled that from. Yeah. So this is just a low time frame support resistance level. Essentially, you made a nice high here, right? And a nice my nice SR level. Big move to the downside. Price comes back up to it. Rejection. Nice pullback basically to your weekly level here before you're in, you know, another kind of impulsive move, like continuation of this impulsive move, um, but ultimately forming your high here. And now you're getting a bit of a pullback. So for, I mean, this would be more of a scalp type trade, I guess you could say. But I think essentially where the seven, let's just call it 780. I think 780 could be a pretty decent, you know, potential scalp opportunity. Again, basically just another retest of this SR level. And this is kind of like lower time frame stuff, but I'm trying to essentially look for an entry um, that's relatively close to where we are. Although again, like this is this would be more of an educated entry in my opinion. I think just buying here because XTZ is at 826, and you're you're looking for this to continue to new you know continue to all time high that type of thing. I just don't think that's a very very smart thinking in my opinion. Um, but again, if you like if you're dying to get into XTZ and you're not and you don't want to um you, you think that you're not going to get any substantial pullback then what again what you can do is come down to lower time frames and try to find some confluences to kind of again help give you at least some sort of trading edge to get you a, a better risk reward you know entry that like you feel you have to be in right which i think is a bad reason to like i think that's bad thinking when you know essentially putting yourself in that type of position but again if you're going to do it I think that, um, you know, again, at least having a technical reason to, to take an entry that is better than not, not you know, just have your only reason being you don't want to miss out, right? Uh, but yeah, so 780, kind of an area that I would be looking at. Again, this is like low time frame stuff. You lose 780. I mean, kind of back down to like this 730, 750 would kind of be my next area, local support before finally your weekly um but yeah it looks like you're forming kind of a i mean not that i'm not going to sit here and call this a top right now and to be fair it does look a bit toppy um and quite honestly like this key level which i'm trying to remember if i went down on like what time frame yeah so i mean even just even an hourly so like what what i i mean what was nice about this is taking this high on this candle like you did and then you closed it basically below this key level right so you look at where your wicks are right resistance resistance so again price makes its way up finds you know again resistance level resistance level price backs off comes back up resistance resistance again you got basically took this high closed below nice swing failure pattern of this and then you got a bit of a deeper retracement right so what is that from this high to low nine percent that's pretty substantial like especially you're trading with leverage that's very very like that's that's a very very large move um if you're looking at it from that perspective and then here same thing essentially you got another run of the high look at where you close below this key level nice short opportunity there and you're getting another essentially move back to the low of this local range that's forming right so you can kind of see that when you had this impulsive move up you have a, a range form here for about what, eight hours or so, something like that, before you get another impulsive move up and then you're back testing this old range, right? This mini range that you have here. So zoomed way in on the chart like we are, you could assume that you're relatively at support level, right? Like again, this is scalp type trading. Like this isn't, you're not looking for swing positions or anything that you're probably gonna hold for a crazy amount of time. Um, but again, scalping down here, that's essentially like how you could look to, to read this chart. So which your R1 monthly pivot um, is kind of acting again as another support. It was resistance, right? Look at where your candle closes were, which I think is pretty impressive. So basically came up to your R1 monthly pivot, resistance, impulse move up, found your, again, a new resistance. Now you back tested this R1 monthly pivot as support, nice bounce, made a new high. And again, you're currently forming another range here. So 
to the upside this key level i think is very important i think if you're able to reclaim this then again i you xtz probably continues to march on the new highs as far as this run is concerned um if you lose this r1 monthly pivot you know especially looking back uh, this this range that was formed here then very likely again this is low time frame stuff but that 780 level that we identified nice sr level i think that could be another bounce zone um if that fails you're probably coming back again down to you know 750 ish area i wouldn't expect a, a, a large reaction or bounce off of that necessarily but ultimately probably this weekly uh, which looking at this hourly chart again if it came down maybe test of the weekly you know take out this candle here um, which you know there could be a fair amount of stops um, behind this because again this is this is a nice low before an impulse move a lot of people like to put their stops behind a candle like this um so again i mean that's something that i could foresee happening um, but anyway that's xcz we looked at high time frame levels and uh really zoomed in to again low time frame levels here basically gave you your very local support and resistance levels that you could look to enter a trade off of and what you know the necessary conditions are in my opinion to see continuation here either up or down let me zoom back out see if i forgot anything but yeah i mean this looks a bit toppy i mean a pullback here would make sense um this isn't something that i would look you know, i wouldn't necessarily expect it to come all the way back down here but um you know if it came back again back down maybe to the 780 level something like that it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be anything that would be bad as long as that held up but yeah very nice move and congratulations to anybody who's in xtz especially if you've, you've been in from lower you're probably very happy right now as you should be uh again ichimoku not super helpful here not super helpful um yeah it's just not that helpful for the time being maybe things shape up in uh you know four to seven days something like that we'll see where your tank and kijun line up um just it wasn't like super well respected i mean this time it wasn't you know the middle time these other two times you can make it a case for saying your, your kijun is very very strong support uh i definitely would want to be aware of that but that's kind of way down here at six bucks so that would require you again breaking this weekly support which would be you know you would look for that kind of lower test i guess um anyway i hope that was helpful enjoy doing this public video i'm gonna have to do more of these um again, again i'll try to do a video tomorrow and i do have some trading bot content coming out this month again it's been super busy um the last few months with the vips we've, we've been putting in a lot of work in 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 that room and uh, if you want to join us there's going to be a link in the description below of the in the of the video and uh we'll see you on the next video trade safe out there